All right, everyone, welcome back to the DSL Invitational here at the Caster's Desk. I am Wyman with Ms. Yona, and Yona, of course, I have to ask you once again, how do you feel? Well, uh, uh, great. Nice. <laughs> I think I finally, like, get ridden to the hangover. Uh-huh. So uh, today I would have been able to play well, but um, I can't, so I'll cast yeah, well instead. Yeah, today is not yesterday, <laughs> so I'm, yeah. I'm sorry for you, man. So I guess I have to cast well instead, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. Well, we have quite the match for you, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be Red versus Harstam. Of course, Red versus Harstam last year was, of course, the finals of the DSL Open. Uh, wait, uh, that wasn't last year. That was 2013. Two years ago. Two yeah. years ago. Wow, it hasn't been two years. It's so <laughs> long ago. And, uh, yeah, it was a really good time. And it was a pretty sick ups upset, I guess. I don't think a lot of people expected Harstam to win. Um, and yeah, the lobby is sitting up, is uh, being um, set up, and we're just waiting for Yona to join the lobby right now. Back then? I think Harstam was already considered uh, similar skill levels to Red, or even slightly better. Well, I don't think anyone ex expected the sweep. The sweep. Yeah, I guess. I guess that's true. Um, yeah. I think back then uh, the map pool was still a lot different. You had That's a true. lot of maps where Harsim's immortal pushes were very strong. Yeah, so Harsim lost his immortal and pushes. Uh, yeah, I uh, yeah I think I, I expected it okay. back then. So, but maybe I, I'm just an overmind. Maybe I just see more than others. Well, the still Red currently really has a nice chance to get a, at getting a, a revenge. I, I I think his chances are higher now than they yeah. were back then. No, I, I definitely agree. Like he seems in better shape play wise. Like, they both played extremely well in their groups, really not dropping anything, I think maybe a map or one, uh, but still, I, I barely saw any mistakes from them. Alright guys, we are into the game and we will start with the introductions. In the left side of Catalina, we have the Red Surf from Team Liquid. It's Red! And in the 12 o'clock position, in the blue trunks, it's Fnatic Harstam! Alright, well there's one thing that cannot be emphasized enough, is that Harstam likes Immortal Sentry and that Red likes drones. So. And Regardless, drones, drones usually don't do well against the Immortal Sentry. No, no, it's quite the opposite, in fact. Uh, so I do expect Red to you know be diligent with his scouting and just go for like a quick three hatch, maybe. Like if you were in Red's Red situation, would you do something like that against Harstam? Uh, three hatch, yeah. I think uh, we'll see Red go three hatch before pool every single game. I don't think uh, Red expects Harstam to counter rush. Hmm. Harstam is the type of player that will kind of have one or two things he thinks is good and kind of stick to it. Mm -hmm. So um, I would be very surprised if we see a forge out of Harstam any game and a pool first out of Red any game. Yeah, Harstam seems, as, as in the previous series as well, has seemed like the safe player to play, you know, standard according to ways he likes to play. Uh, that kind of bit him in the ass when he had to play against Optimus, yeah. uh, and which caused him to, of course, uh, lose two games against uh, you know, a, a very tailored build, which pretty much Harstam was almost powerless to stop. Yeah, for sure. For and I wouldn't reasons. say he played standard in a series against me either. Like, he immortal rushed one game, which is really strong on overgrowth. Yeah. And the second game, he didn't play the, the, the super standard with the just a three gate forge uh, third base. But he did make an oracle. But that's still, like, relatively standard. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. Hmm. Well, Red is uh, now starting to scout out uh, Harstam's base. Uh, regardless of that, though, we do see the drone of uh, Red heading towards the third, and he will be plopping down. Uh, the third hatchery before pool, so indeed very g standard, very greedy opener from Red uh, in this game. I think Catalina certainly map in which you can pull this off uh, quite consistently. Yeah. Um, it looks like to be a gateway expand from Harstam, like he's still on one gas. Uh, and yeah, Red is also already in a really good position, like he's going to be seeing this with his Overlord and feel very comfy. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he's going to want to have an Overlord at the natural to spot when the extra gates go down to see if it's something like Fourier pressure. And if it is for gate pressure, I'm very curious to how he did decides to try to defend it because he still hasn't taken a gas, which is quite greedy against a gate expand. Yeah, Harstam made a zealot quite early on. Is that something Pro yeah, usually do? Um, 
Not necessarily. It's possible to cancel it, but if you haven't scouted, it's kind of just a safe thing to do. Because if six links pop, you might lose your f uh, pylon in your natural, yeah. which you need to finish to build the extra gates. Yeah. So I like the zealot. Um, and he's chrono boosting his cyber course, and he still hasn't taken a second guess. I think it's very likely we'll see four gate pressure out of Harstam. And Red sees this and is making a guess, but that's quite a late guess. I think yeah. at this point, because he is taking a guess and it's not going to be the mass queen response, it might be a roach defense against the, the four gate pressure. Well, he's making four links, which is uh, four more than he usually does. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that's a good habit to have against uh, a player like Harstam who likes to be aggressive on the map. As a Zerg, you really need to have good map vision. Well, Harstam doesn't even know where uh, Red spawned yet. He's going the wrong way. This could actually be really bad if he doesn't actually scout the base. Mm. Yeah, he's going the wrong way for sure. Uh, this leaves Red with a lot of opportunities, you know, because he saw that move out with his Overlord. Um, he yeah. knows just what to anticipate, you know, he's got a Queen in every base, uh, adding on, uh, well, except for, for a third, it's about to Does pop out. Does he know? Is he m angling it differently? Yeah, I think he's angling it upwards now, or is he Is he just, oh, wow, this is really bad for Arston. Oh, he's his actually building a pylon. Finish, and he's not going to be able to warp in in the correct location. Oh, wow, this is really bad. Yeah, he sees that there's no third. And I think he realized, and he's pulling back like his probe and his motion core and sell it the other way. But Red's doing really well, like he's scouting everywhere with his links. And I think he... yes... no? No, he hasn't spotted the pylon, actually. Yes, but it's but mainly because it's so misplaced. Like, wha why would there be a pylon there? Yeah. It's not in a useful position at all. Oh, this, is this is really weird already, like... Um uh, Red is really smelling something, like he's making more and more links and it's the link speed is still halfway from, halfway from finished, so it seems like he really wants to go uh, pylon hunting and try to shut down whatever Harstam's doing, which, uh, like you mentioned, is uh, you know some sort of four-gate attack, like he's warping in sentries and zealots um, <laughs> at the wrong place, basically, and it's very hard for him to even get in the correct position, like his probe is finally heading to the top left side of the map, but it should be spotted by the overlord there, and there's already a, a ton of links out. Yeah, at this point, uh, Harstam hasn't used every warp in available and has started making probes. He has warped in some units, but that's not uh, definitely not the full force of all four, four of his gateways. So at this point, he's just trying to pretend to be pressuring and just recall and probably take a third base from this. Yeah, he's got recall, uh, which he's going to have to use right now because he gets completely surrounded, drops a couple force fields, making this engagement a bit more favorable for him uh, with the Zealots that are doing quite a nice amount of damage. Uh, did he actually lose it? He lost... Man. Uh, he lost nothing there, actually. His he only timing, lost pylon. His timing and force field placement was really great there. He didn't lose a single sentry, not even a zealot, even oh though the link count was here sufficient. we go again? No, maybe? Uh, he really wants to force field out a couple circlings, but still, uh, if he force fields him to the other side of the ramp... Yeah, he, can't, he, he needs to not force field uh, the zerglings in, because he won't have force fields to protect his army, but as long as he saves one or two force fields to protect his sentries, he should be fine against this there's amount of link. There's actually 40 zerglings out on the map for red right now. Like, that... To me, it gives me the feeling that he's pretty damn safe against uh, any incoming attack from Harstam. But the thing is that Harstam also needs to you know, be able to get his own third up at some point, otherwise he will just get out macroed. He steps on the creep, and I'm not sure if that's a really good no, move. He, he gets completely dropped by his link. Drops a couple of force fields, gets a nice angle on these zerglings, but he's losing cells left and right now, and I think Red is in a great position here. Uh, that was sloppy by Harstam. He overestimated his army size. Now he's going to be in a be uh, not, not that great of a spot. If he had saved his army and just re-expanded, I would have given him an edge. But right now, losing the sentries yeah, and having costly. to warp in offensively again is going to make it so much harder to once again take a third base. He's uh, cleared up a bunch of Zerglings, but there's still much more. Once again, Red gets a complete surround on his army. Arstam not yet uh, willing to recall, apparently. And he's Red gets a really good trade here. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. Like He could have had four, five, six sentries with like high energy in his natural. Or he has a few, but he just warped them in. He doesn't have that many force fields. And if Red does counterattack and try to kill the third right now, uh, Harsim's going to have a very difficult time holding it. Looks like Red will be transitioning into the mid game with a more Ling Hydra based composition. Uh, I expect him to get a bunch of upgrades and go into a fourth. But right now we see the effect of uh, you know Harsim's poor decision making. I have to say at this point, like he's gonna he's got a lot of sentries. But these are a lot of links, so his controls have to kind of have He's to be gonna perfect. He's going to be forced to use force fields on the Nexus, which then leaves him with less force fields to defend the oh, sentries. Oh, does it even help, though? Here come the links right on top of the sentries. These force fields do a good job, though. Uh, but yeah, those were a lot of force fields, and uh, Red lost qu quite, a bunch of links, quite a bunch of links, but at yeah, three that bases, was, that that's okay. That was okay for um, 
it wasn't bad for Red, but it was uh, it was good for Hearst. I mean, he didn't lose sentries. He saved his nexus. The only thing that's very problematic right now is that he's not getting any sort of wall in done at his third base. It's a naked nexus. Exactly. And on Zerk, you always want to have that cannon between the pylons with a yeah. few gates in front of it, he's just to make it harder for Zerk to angle its army into your third base. I'm surprised Red is not going for a fourth. Like he allowed the fourth ba the third base of Harstum to go up. So he really has to answer that with a fourth of his own, uh, I feel. Um, of course, he could be playing some sort of counterattack, like he's getting Hydras and he's yeah, even moving Yeah, getting them Hydra up range, seeing the plus one started. I don't see an Infestation pair or, sp or a Spire building. This definitely looks like a timing attack. I wish his creep spread was a bit better, though. Like, he's got a queen with a lot of energy sitting at the front. He seems to be mostly focusing on his, on his army and his upgrades, but not so much on his economy and the rest of, you know, the groundwork that you need to lay as a Zerg. He's actually moving these Hydras all the way to the ramp, but... Uh, oh, he gets three hydras get caught, and he might catch one or two oh, more. Oh, but there's a lot of DPS on these hydras, though. I'm not sure if the army of Harstum is actually capable of uh, de dealing with this all this well. He almost loses a few sentries, but still gets yeah, a good trade. Yeah, he, he lost Zealot and a sentry, and he got three hydras, maybe even four there. That was definitely worth it for Harstum. Very well played. All right. Well, Red is now finally taking his fourth. He seems to be moving in with even more hydras. Like all he's been producing uh, a couple last few minutes is hydralisks. Uh, and this is starting to get a bit dangerous here for Harsim since he's currently, he doesn't have any Colossi, he doesn't have any form and of area force attack. field count is very low, I see 4 or 5 max. And that's like enough to force field it at once, but then you cannot re-engage or cut off a part of the arm. There's no blink. 3 go down, he doesn't have much more. Uh, he does have a few more, but he ne really needs to be careful. He's gonna have to rely on his control here because plus 2 and blink are still not finished. Uh, there's no, yeah, he's gonna have to warp in a couple of stalkers to fight these hydras. Positioning will just be key here, like... He, he does to have get a sentry on top of the ramp in his natural, so he should got be another fine one. just staying in these positions Tops for a little bit. Tops the overcharge. Road speed is about to finish, and it's actually uh, a hive already for Red. No, no, actually, it's not that quick. Red seems to be really focused on being offensive here with his army, while I feel he should be focusing more on his economy. He's finally you know, moving a couple drones to his fourth, but he hasn't. he's just only now taking the gases. And he's getting hyped, and here we go. First engagement here. Uh, decent angle for uh, for Red here with a lot of wasted force fields, and this forces Harston back up the ramp. Yeah, there, it's the the point is nearing where Red has to back off, or he's going to lose all his hydras, and he yeah. realizes that as well. This is a really, really dire situation for a Zerg player. You never want to go into Hive just because you're stuck on Roach Hydra Tech. You want to go into Hive because you want to go into Hive. What what's kind of happening is that. Uh, Red tried to Hydra Ling all in uh, Harstum, it didn't work, and now oh. he's like, well, I need to add something to my composition to make it stronger. But that's a Hive, but yeah. it's not good. The only thing that's really going for Red is that Harstum has been so focused on holding the attack that he's never spent time making a hallucinated Phoenix or Observer yeah. to scout out what's Red, what Red's doing. So his Templar Archive is a little bit mis mistimed. It's possible that if Red goes straight across the map with two or three Vipers, he might have a chance of doing damage, but the Templar Archives is quite close to finishing. I don't think uh, Red will be in time. The, har the army of Red is getting quite scary. We have a second Colossus on the way for Harstum, so it's really going to have to be about his force field control and keeping tabs on his army. He could get some really good force fields here, though. Shops off a nice bit of the army, uh, backs off a bit of range. Very nice force fields. You'll still, still have some of the roaches are actually sneaking by, but re Red really can't fight there. Nice control by Harstum. It costs him a lot of energy on his sentries, but he really needs this to prevent the army of the Zerg from snowballing too far. It, that was okay for Arsene, but I don't think that mattered too much for Red. He's still busy remaxing his army and his Vipers aren't ready yet. So it's not a big blow to him, but it's nice for uh, Arsene to pick off a few units here and there. I'm a bit afraid though, like m maneuvering around the map like that, he doesn't know where Vipers are. So he's, he's playing a bit risky, I feel, but maybe uh, he knows the timing. There's one problem here for I feel for Harstum. Like he's grabbing a fourth, but the map control is all reds. He could be playing around with Nidus, but even more so, the creep spread is quite good. And at this point, Harstum is having a really, you know, he, he's, he can't really get a foothold in the game. Like his army is starting to get scary, but it's not there yet. And he doesn't have really, you know, any way of getting uh, Zealot harassment in or in any way. I think when you're playing against a Roach Hider composition like Red's is, you don't need to have uh, as much control of the game. You need to very f very much focus on uh, retaining your important units. Mm -hmm. As long as Harstum can keep his Templar and Colossus alive, or at least a large portion of them, he should be fine, because at some point there won't be an army from Zerg that defeats Harstum's army. All right. Well, there's a lot of Hydras and Roaches now at the front with two Vipers, three Vipers here in the back to support it. First force field should be go. Nice feedback! There's on the Vipers, Viper. there's still a nice blinding. No, he did. Yeah, he did yeah, blinding cloud there on the army, and Har Harstum's army seems a bit trapped in the corner. However, the amount of uh, Red's army that's actually fighting here is only like a very bit small bit. There's a lot, large portion of it though 
in the main, uh, now finding these Blink Stalkers. Nice control here from Harstam, he needs to Blink back a few more because he's losing quite a few of his Stalkers. Loses the Mothership Core as well, but the main fight from Harstam uh, down the ramp uh, seems to be going quite well and he might be actually be poised to make some sort of move. However, the Remax from Red, 8 Corruptors, 14 Hydras and a Greater Spire is underway. Yeah, I think this is a really dire situation for a Zerg player. He hasn't had time to make a big bang before he does the Brutalert switch. Yeah. And he's forced to make Hydras because otherwise a counterattack will kill him. Whoa, these cannons are actually... Uh, usually you know, having static defense like this isn't that good. But they definitely did their job right there. And Harsum is now comfortably on four bases, I would say. Uh, Roach is trying a bit of a run by. Harsum's going to have to warp in defense fleet to do something about these annoying Roaches. Um, but still, you know, he's kind of backing off onto creep. Trying to maybe clear something. Does he even have an observer though? I don't see one with his army. Yeah, he has no observer. That's actually uh, something you really should do something about because without an observer, you know, you could get surprised by something like Infestors. He's building one now, I think. Oh, the War Prism at the top of the, of the ramp, up the top of the map gets intercepted. There were four zealots in there. Uh, nice, nice fish in there by Red picking that up. At least uh, this makes Harstam see the uh, corruptors. I would almost say it's worth it to not have a war prism seeing the corruptors because now he knows the brutal switch is coming. And once you know the brutal switch is coming, you know that you only have to defend one more push till you win the game as yeah. Protoss. Keep an eye on the upgrades though. We see that plus three is finished for the Protoss and he's getting plus one armor as well, whereas. Uh, you know, Red still doesn't have a single care base upgrade. He's trying to move in for a flank here. We're going to have to see some storms and the Corruptors here. Nice storm. It does quite a bit of damage. Nice feedback. No blinding clouds go off. One forward blink by Harstam. Not sure if this is the correct move here. He's going to take a lot of damage from these Hydras. And these both players are falling in supply. But the Colossus are still doing so much damage here. Red does have bank to Remax, so this doesn't necessarily mean it's over. And Harstam lost a lot of his uh, cost-efficient units. I feel like that was not a good trade for Harstam. I felt like he was in a commanding lead, and this is kind of a point where Red can pull it back if he plays extremely well. Well, both I players are, are still on are four bases, so they're pretty much equal economy. But well you're right about the Remax. Yeah. 16 Hydras and 21 Roaches. That's pretty scary. That's pretty scary. I still think uh, Harsim should be uh, fine dealing with it, but I think he was in a commanding lead, and right now he's down in supply. I still think he... Uh, I would uh, I would put him ahead of Red in this game, but it's a lot closer than it was before that fight. We have a Fleet Beacon and a Stargate uh, already up for Harstam. Two Stargates even in the main, uh, getting ready to uh, transition into Tempest if Brutelords uh, will become part of this. Finally, there's a bit of harassment from Harstam uh, in the bottom left. You know, annoying uh, these <laughs> attacking the hatchery, but he's now getting killed up close uh, by a Hydralix. <laughs> some, uh, some warp pins as well. Enjoy the pure Roach Hydra Remax that no. Red is doing because it's not giving him any punch anymore. Uh, he has uh, Harstam has enough AOE oh. to deal with Hydras. Uh, I think this is very bad for Red. Look we'll at the maneuvers here by Harstam and Red. Red may be trying to set a concave up, but instead, you know, just gets his army wiped out. He's trying to deny this fifth base of, ha of Harstam, and Harstam is actually nice in place uh, to in order to you know to defend this. But he still needs good force field, and he needs his High Templar. He's fine to uh, giving up that fifth base. Four base is all he needs right now. He just needs to be cost efficient. Nice feedback there. Uh, force fields will still be crucial. Wow, big storms actually going down on the Roach Hydra army. Not sure why Red oh. is committing here. He's losing so much of his army. Maybe he feels he can't deal with this and GG. Wow. I actually think Red had a chance to come back into the game after that attack with the Corruptors, but um, he just didn't transition out of it. I think no. if he would have gotten Burrow movement and uh, Burrow for Roaches, like slowly started filtering out his Roaches, set up some defenses, and he needed to transition into Swarmos, which All is, right. I mean, not perfect, but it's something, or transition into something like Muta, or, or do something more. But remaxing Roach Hydra that late into the game usually never works because there's so much Storm and so much Colossus available that uh, it rarely works. There's too much area of effect at that point. Yeah, I like wouldn't say Red would have won the game or been ahead, but he would have been able to have a closer fight. All right. I'm, I'm, I was quite worried when I saw him. Like, of course, he was losing his other bases. Uh, Harsim's harass was finally you know, paying off. He had a bunch of uh, charge lots hacking away at his fifth and sixth yeah. uh, hatchery. So he, he, he couldn't really keep that up for much longer with his current army composition. But seeing a Zerg like that, Overcommit into storm. <laughs> it's quite a uh, it's quite a bit painful to watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think he was just afraid of the counterattack. That's the only reasoning I can think. He was afraid that, uh, or he hoped for it. Maybe that's yeah. maybe a better word. He hoped Harsim would counterattack after winning that fight. 
and then Roach Hydra just overwhelms it, and then right, it can be good. Let's get into the game number three on Dead Wing. Here we are again, ladies and gentlemen. It is currently tied one to one between these two players. We have in the bottom left, representing Team Liquid, it's the Red Zerg. It's Red. <laughs> oh, it's one zero. I'm sorry. Was that the first game? Yeah, it was. Huh. In the top right corner, in the blue trunks, Fnatic Karsten! <laughs> I swear this was game two. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're on Deadwing, which is uh, an even bigger map than Catalina. Um, I, I worry always when I see the Roach Hydra composition, because like you mentioned, it just doesn't transition that well into the late game when you face mass AoE. You really have to do something else like Brute Lords or Swarmos, something better, more valuable as a Zerg player. Uh, how do you think Red should play this game out on a map like Deadwing? Um, I think Deadwing uh, is probably Hearthstone's second pick. Yeah, I think Catalina was Red's pick. Uh, the reason for that is because the distance between the natural and the third mm -hmm. is quite big on Catalina. So it's easy for um, for Red to put pressure on it, but it didn't work out with his Ling Hydra timing, which probably was his game plan from the start. Yeah. And this is probably Hearthstone's pick, and I think he will play a fairly standard game. Maybe Phoenix, maybe Oracle into the third base. That's actually a really big deal that Red lo lost the first game on his own map pick. Like, yeah. he probably had something completely laid out for that game, and he lost to it, so that not just, you know, in terms of map score, but also for his mentality, that has to be quite the blow. Yeah, I, um, I, I feel like there were multiple things wrong for a red that game. I never like going Link Hydra timings against something that's not a Stargate opener. Uh -huh. I feel like so any everything that's not Stargate opener makes so much Sentry and Stalker that you can never really get in there. Well, if you play against a Stargate opener, they're, f they're usually forced to go into Colossus, which allows Ling Hydra to be very powerful, because there's one Colossus, a, a few Zealots, and a few Sentries, mm. and it's a more fragile composition. It's very fragile, as we saw in that last engagement, where uh, everything got completely shredded by Storms and Colossi. Uh, first scout here being done by Harsten. If you look at the path of the Fog of War of the Probe, you can actually see that he was going to go Scout Cross initially, but he corrected it. Um, but yeah, he now sees that there is no, uh, no hatch here. In fact, you could almost say that against a player like Red, you don't even have to scout the main to know if there's a base there. <laughs> you just check for the third. Yeah, I guess. Um, well, I mean, uh, the scariest thing is someone known for something to to mix it up. Yeah. A cheesy player playing a greedy build, a greedy player playing a cheesy build. So I think it's always important against any type of player to consider all possi possibilities, and I'm pretty sure Harston will do that. Yeah. All right. So from Red's perspective, what's the kind of composition you want to go for? Like, it's almost impossible these days to go straight in the Mutas. I feel even if you're on three bases, like, there's just too much room for the Protoss to do damage with gateway base attacks and all that. So he's probably going to open, like, once again, Ling Hydra, I suppose? Uh, yeah, Hydras can be good, but I feel like um, on Deadwing you either need to go Ling Roach into Ultra, but it's kind of difficult to defend three base all-ins. Uh, I think another possibility is something like Ling Roach into a few Swarmos into a transition mm. or just a regular Swarmos style where you turtle. I think those are good builds on Deadwing. Um, I like Roach Shatter Viper on other maps and then getting Roach Tunneling Claws and start harassing. But on Deadwing, I feel like it's not a very good style because it's too easy for Protoss to defend and you're yeah. forced up ramps. So I feel like uh, that type of aggression will not be effective. Uh, yeah, I think I your best bet is playing a bit greedier than normal yourself and transitioning into a later game style like Swarmos or mm. Ultras or Swarmos into Muta, stuff like that. Well, Harstam is currently chronoing out his warp gate and he just added two more gates. So I do feel we're going to see some gateway pressure from him uh, once again. Uh, he's got a probe out hidden on the map in a position that I don't fa think Red will uh, will ever discover him. He's just adding on a couple more links. Where, you know, where is the probe? Yeah, it's like in the middle to the top. Ah, right. Yeah. Um, Even you oh, can find he added more gates. You're correct. 
I only saw three gates, and it was actually at the regular timing. Even more so gates. seeing those front two gates looks like a three gate expansion. But he added more gates in his main base, which is very unexpected. And as you can see, Red is making mass drones, and he started a carapace upgrade. He's not, he's not got a clue of what's going on. No, this not is at really, all. Really bad for Red. Yeah, he, he invested a lot of resources into that upgrade as well. There's literally nothing for him to even know that this is going on currently. Like, there's a pylon on the way for Harstam, but it's completely out of Red's vision. There's a stalker on the map, which should deny this uh, Zirkling from uh, scouting any further. Zing link speed is quite a way, uh, ways away, and the warp gates are now finishing up, so... Uh, uh, the Link doesn't see the pylon. I think this is... He Red does have a feeling something's going on, and he's starting to make links, but this is going to be a very, very tough hold. This he is going to start be extremely tough. Or something. There was really no way he could have almost known. Like, this other Overlord is still not even close. It's going to go into the base of Harstam now. But still, the first Stalkers already making their way up to the third, sniping a couple drones. This is where Harstam's control is going to come have to come into play uh, for as good as he can. Like, he's starting to build down on the hatchery. Sniping Queens will be extremely good here, uh, doing as much damage as he can. He has to, you know, stutter step as much as he can against these uh, links. And at this point, for Harstam, he really needs to keep no. these stalkers alive and try to warp in as many zealots as he can. If Red can buy time for his carapace and link speed to finish and gets a big link flood going, I give him a shot. But that's like a little bit off still. He is doing a very good job of buying time and he might be able to barely hold this if both upgrades oh, finish. There's no link He's speed engaging though. a bit too early though, he doesn't have carapace yet. Uh, still all of his queens are up, he's doing a good job at that. Harstam wedging himself in an interesting position where he might even get more surrounded. Zealot's getting a nice concave here with, this, with the Zerglings, but the Stalkers are not being touched. The forward pylon allows for more warp pins, and these Zealots are really shredding the links, but the Queens are still up though. Uh, I don't think it matters anymore. No, against Zealots, the Carapace upgrade just doesn't uh, have a much uh, enough effect. It only helps against plus one Zealot because it removes the two slash kill. But against plus zero uh, Zealots, it's always three slashes anyway, so the Carapace has very little effect. Which means that even though he had a l big link flood, it didn't uh, kill GG. GG. Wow. Harstam with the seven gate closes this game out instantly. Like, there was really no doubt from any point. Red was just too far behind in both unit composition, his position. He did no really no way to save his third. There were no spines. Um, he did a, a lot of things right, but the, mo the biggest mistake I feel was engaging there at a suboptimal sub angle. I think if he had melee instead of carapace, that could have been okay for him. Yeah. Carapace doesn't help against zero zero units and that's so like a stupid concept but because every ze uh, zealot is fighting a link it will take three slashes for the zealots regardless of zero carapace or one carapace it only matters if a zealot has plus one that's why uh, nowadays with the gateway uh, openings you uh, more often see plus one melee builds because there's a, a lot of situations where uh, Protoss has a delayed upgrade oh, I see. well against the fort when forge was popular the carapace was a bit more common because Zealots would always have plus one. All right, well, let's get into the next game. Harstam is up 2-1. He's on match point. Yeah, and at this point, it just doesn't look like Red has the, the, e the, the edge to take it. All right, let's get into it. We are back in game three between Harstam and Red. I will, uh, of course, introduce the players we here have here at the top. We have the blue Zerg from Team Liquid. He is Red. <laughs> and his opponent currently up 2-0 in a very dominant fashion, I have to say. He is the Red Protoss from Team Fnatic. He is Harstam. <laughs> Sorry for stealing your announcement there. And it's okay. You can like, man. The duo announcement was good enough. They were like uh, similar tones and an emotional level. Ah. So it's good for the viewers. All right. Well, tell me about this map in PVZ, man. Uh, this map, I think, um, I would call it a bad disease. I am not gonna name <laughs> the name, but um, I really dislike this map. The one that gives you itches, right? <laughs> yes, the one that gives you itches. Um, 
No, I really, I really have a lot of um, like it's not a terrible map, and I think if you play Swarmos on it, it's a good map for Zerg. But I don't, I really dislike playing Swarmos, and any aggressive style gets shut down so hard because the natural's in the main, and any time a natural and the main are that connected, it's very hard to get in any type of ground harass. And Whoa. the third base funnels everything into one engage like into one corner when you engage it. There's only one angle into attacking Protoss on this map, and that is very frustrating for someone has, uh, who has a playstyle like me. Man, the greed is so real. Like Hearth, uh, I mean, Red took his uh, third base at his natural, as his natural. Like he took it first. Um, I, I guess you could. Uh, it kind of that makes it as natural, I suppose. Like the other base is just as close. Uh, but Harston also went Nexus first, so we have a very greedy opener uh, from both players here. This hatch first is actually really good against cannon rushes because it's never worth it to cannon rush this hatch first. Uh, Zerg cancels that, takes the hatch in the natural and the gold base, and is still in a fine position. So taking this hatch first is more of a safety precaution than a greed precaution. Oh, I see. Well, that's quite I quite interesting. Um, Harston really seems in control in this series. Like, this is not the red we saw playing yesterday, to be honest. Uh, of course, Harston has a lot of experience against a player like red. He knows what to look for. He knows how he can kill him, <laughs> quite clearly. But yeah. Last game was just a complete shutout. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I think being uh, very honest and straight with the viewers, I think Harstam is just better than Red currently. I think there have been moments where Red's been very good, but Red hasn't been practicing this much, uh, that much. He has said himself. And just generally, Harstam is doing really well at the moment. He is doing very well on ladder. He just seems to be very in good shape. And um, I feel like... That, combined with the fact that this is probably Red's worst matchup and Harstam's best matchup, mm. makes it a very, very rough, rough ride for Red. Yeah, Har Red was always much more known for his DVZ, whereas his macro-oriented style uh, always seemed to come to fruition much more than in PVZ. Yeah, uh, and his ZVZ like is good too. Down. Like, um, even when I do really well in practice, I still have trouble beating Red ZVZ because just he is just very solid in ZVZ, in my Z. opinion at least. All right. Um, so yeah, we have once again the three hatch build by uh, by Red. Um, I really, uh, yeah, he's not getting any gases so far, and I'm pretty sure he had gases in the previous games. Uh, so he seems to be anticipating a greedy build from Harstam's side uh, as well, at, for at least. Yeah, I think uh, he only grabbed gas the previous game because of the carapace build, and then the first game he took gas because he saw the four gate pressure. But yeah. Um, as you can see, uh, his standard play is playing gasless and then getting 520, 530 double yeah. gas, which I think is a great opener with a uh, double hatch before pool. You can get either like an insanely quick lair into road speed timings, or insanely quick lair into viper timings, or you can grab link speed and then roaches and slowly build into your army and just play very safe. There's something I want to emphasize. Red, of course, lost on his, dis on the, on his own pick, and then Harstam is playing on his own pick. What's re really important to remind is that the previous game that Harston picked, he, he seemed to have a very keen out specific strategy for it, and it was you know, deadly effective. And this time, however, he seems to be sort of more calm, letting Red play his macro style the, the way he prefers to, uh, playing macro himself. So I really wonder what kind of, ah, uh, yeah, there's actually, ah, uh, this is an Immortal Sentry build. Yeah, um, and I think this is smart. I think Red is too busy with what happened last game and too busy what happened other games to be very aware. But I think that had the Overlord... Yeah. Oh, but it's in such a good place. I, if that Overlord decides to ever go in, it will definitely spot it. And spotting it is huge. I like think this will be a three immortal uh, century all in. Like, he's only adding on gates right now. So he's definitely got time to add on another immortal. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is exactly the same build he did against me. And this build is so hard to stop when you don't know it's coming. Like, I feel fine against this build if I know it's coming ahead of time. Yeah. But seeing it late or not spotting it almost always means death. Two Red has started front. making roaches, though. Yeah, two links die at the front. Oh, he's already started roach production, actually. That's that's quite used. Like, he's, he's ran two links up the ramp. He saw two sentries with a lot of energy. There seems to be... There's two gateways there. There was no intention. Actually, he saw three gates up there. There was no intention from Harstam to take a third. Uh, I think... Red is in a much better position to... I would really like Red to make some oh. spines. Yeah, and pure creep. roach lane can be very difficult, but if you have spines to micro around, it becomes a lot better for Zerg. The spines make up for so much of the roach lane attack distance, while if you have pure roach lane, you need to rely on a good surround or a good engagement. And if Harstam positions correctly, that will be very difficult. Speaking so even of position... Though he's already... Oh, he thinks it's a third base, and he's going to push with the roach lane. That Does could be good or bad for him, actually. Yeah, it he really could either catch the army and... 
Oh, uh, there's really no reinforcements here quite yet for Harstam. So it's just a couple of Immortals. There's also no Mothership Core, so he cannot recall out. There's a Warp Prism flying in, but he's going to need it. And oh, here comes the surround. Oh, oh, Red gets a complete surround on the Immortals. The Warp Prism is trying to come in and save these, but he gon he's going to lose all of his sentries. Fantastic maneuvering by Red. I think, I'm not sure if he moved out to surround the army or if he moved out to spot the third base, but regardless, the maneuvering of his units and positioning was actually very good. The Mothership Core also is very low on energy, so he cannot vote an overcharge in the main. Nice uh, force field though I on these Zerglings, like and he's going to tear, uh, tear these completely apart. The Roaches are getting uh, to the high ground though, so he needs to be really careful with those. Uh, this reminds me of an IEM Ooh. where um, uh, Snoot uh, pretty much beat uh, CJ Hero and then tried to counterattack and lost the game anyway. Oh. Now, th he's not sacking his Roaches, so he's still in an okay spot, but I really hate it when Zerg tried to run up the ramp when they've just held off an all-in. I like the transition, though, uh, as well as getting an extra hatch. Wait, where is he building that hatch? Oh, he's getting a macro hatch in his main, and he's going up the lair. Uh, he's droning once again, adding more Roaches. Yeah, he needs to be careful. Like, he can't lose his army, and he needs to be aware of the follow-up oh. If he nice loses all these Roaches... By Harstam, though. Yeah, he's starting to focus down on all these roaches while the roaches oh, are still focusing so bad for Red. on the zealots. Oh, this is a really good exchange for Harstam. Yeah, sick force tools, and Red just shouldn't have been there. Red should know that he there can be a follow-up push, and now he's in a dicey position. Well, just before that, if he just saved those roaches, he would be in a very commanding lead. There's four immortals out on the map, and the, the army of uh, Red is still mostly roach-based. So they will, they will just tear through it quite quickly. There's no roach speed or upgrades. Uh, quite close for him to finishing. He will pr probably get it for the game ends. Uh, he's adding on spines like you mentioned though, but I think this is the only time Harston really has in order to f close this out. Yeah, and I think Red will like really kick himself if he does not manage to stop this. Uh, if plus one road speed, uh, plus one road speed and some Hydra's finish, I'm thir I think he will be fine. But if uh, Harston manages to get in there just before that, it could be very tough for him to hold it. With it could road. still be hard for Harston, like this Hydra's currently on their way. Nice force field here, closes in a couple of zealots, but I'm not sure if he can actually commit to this angle. Uh, he might get surrounded by the rest of the roaches, but now uh, the Hydra's here, but they do not have Hydra range quite yet. Four immortals, that's so much, and he still has enough sentry energy to throw down like one or two walls. Oh, Red's yeah. control is going to have to be really good. His creep threat isn't though. Decent force fields here cut off some of the roaches, but not, not quite a lot, forcing him to retreat once again. Decent force fields here this time though, and this chunk is something Harsten can take care of. Red's unit movement has been really good. Pulling in and out of this force field, playing with the spine range. I think he's holding it the best he can, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. Oh, Losing seven more hydras. Might cost him his win. 20 more links in production as well. However, Harstim is now in a position where he can force field the ramp, meaning that only one hatch will actually produce units. He needs to force field now, but he doesn't seem to have enough energy here. Only takes out a few uh, and from the high ground. He's being assaulted as well. The roaches at the bottom are now fighting directly with the stalkers. There's no more force fields, and the immortals will have him to back off. It looks like Red is holding. Set up warping in the back, slashing at the hydras, but it just isn't enough. Even though GG. that mistake, he's not enough. A good hold there by Red, but I really feel it got closer than it should have. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, in the end, the second follow-up push just isn't as strong as the first one, so I feel like it's uh, deserved that he he holds it, obviously. But um, yeah, that was kind of scary. Like, yeah, I'm gonna uh, kick kicking some open doors and yeah. mention that Red really needed this win. Of course, <laughs> yeah, if he, he had lost, he would have been down <laughs> to the third place. But he really needed this win for the series. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let's be honest, like he's going to be going back and onto his own map pick, so I feel he'll be playing more comfortable. Is that true? Are the map picks ABBA as well? Yeah, it was ABBA, I believe. S so okay. uh, it was a really nice match there by Red. Uh, I think he'll be feeling a lot more comfortable going into the next match as well, simply because you know it's his map pick, uh, and he managed to gr you know, still get out a win from Harstam. But I have to agree with you on the fact that that match was a lot closer than it has to, yeah. and Harstam is still on match point. But man, Red moved his units well. Like, Zerg doesn't have the cute, fancy split micro, but knowing when to pull away from force fields, when to engage, how to surround an army, yeah. actually is more detailed and there's more to it than uh, there is to see to the common eye. I see. All right, well, we're just kind of waiting for Harstam here to join our lobby. If uh, Red had just A-moved his units in the last few fights, he would have definitely lost. He engaged with just the right amounts of units uh, that were um, available. Yeah, that would have been disastrous. Like, good thing for Red, obviously, was the fact that Harstam simply ran out of force fields. Like, yeah. you can't but that is because Red forced more force fields by how he moved and played ah, around I with spine raids and stuff. 
All right. Well, that's quite good for him. I hope he, for his sake, of course, he will be able to manage to keep that up. It's also maybe a bit of a bummer for Harsim that his Immortal Sentry push got held because, well, it's kind of his bread and butter, something to fall back on. And it, Overgrowth is a great map for that build. Like right. If he hadn't pulled it out yet, Overgrowth would probably be the map. But right. Overgrowth is probably pretty predictable. Red probably watched the games between me and Harsim. Great. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game number four between Harsim and Red. We are here on Overgrove at the DSCL Invitational, and uh, this is the first semi final we have for you here. In the bottom left of Overgrove, we have the Blue Zerg from Team Liquid. He is Red. In the top right corner, the Red Fanatic player, it's Harsim! I'm not quite sure if that was as viewer friendly as it was before. No, definitely not. Like someone turned up the volume because he wasn't sure what you were saying, and then he literally became deaf. Oh, ripping pepperonis. Sorry. Yeah. It's okay. So, overgrowth PVZ. I, I always feel this is a match where Immortal Sentry is quite popular on, which makes it predictable. Yeah. I think uh, this map used to be kind of tough for uh, Protoss against Zerg because they didn't know how to defend their third base because there's quite a big distance between the natural and the third. But I feel like nowadays with good force fields, good positioning and good building placement, you can definitely hold it. Right. And outside of that, I feel like it's a pretty good map for Protoss to play on. Yeah, but it's also a great map for Swarm Host. It's, it's a fantastic map for Swarm Host. Like, uh, we actually see already a quick scout out uh, here by Harstim sending his first probe down the map, uh, making sure it won't be scouted by the Overlord. Um, He's I think he'll be too late to annoy the drone at the third base, uh, but getting that scout up right away could be really good, because he, he can still almost reactively do some early gateway pressure if he wants to. Yeah, um, and as, a, as I said in, in the start of the series, Reds will 3 HP for a pull every game, and Harsim won't for a trade a forge expand any game. And they both probably know what the other guy's doing, they just won't both don't feel comfortable in a different scenario. Mm. All right. And uh, another drone is now being uh, sent down the ramp in order to check if there are no... Uh, yeah, <laughs> he wants to prevent any sort of cannon rush. So maybe he's not feeling that safe uh, about a potential cannon rush. Like that, to be honest, that probe got there really early. Yeah, so that probe got there pretty early, but sending one drone is not enough to stop a cannon rush. No. If he sends one drone and he and Harsim starts cannon rushing, it's game over. So I'm not sure what that drone is doing. Probably checking if the third base maybe got s something started in order to cancel it if he wants to grab, for example, the gold. Yeah. All right, so, of course, very standard build openers from both players in this case. Uh, Red is getting an excellent scout with his Overlord. The second one is uh, heading towards the natural, uh, so we can get a, a good scout off of the natural and see when gates are being added, all that, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure in this position what Harston wants to do. Like, he's kind of used his trump card, which is the Immortal Sentry. Would you feel, uh, as a Protoss player, would you feel comfortable in a situation like this doing it again? I'm not sure. No, man. for sure not. I don't think it's a good idea. I think, uh, especially seeing how Red de dealt with it last game, catching a mid map, I wouldn't be comfortable doing it on uh, open burst. No. He is adding more gates, though. He's getting up four, four gates in yeah, total. He got four gates. Four Red ga did scout that Harsim was gasless and took a gas of his own. I think he's pretty aware of the possibility of this happening. The thing about four gate pressure, though, is you don't need to go all in with it if you just pressure with it and make uh, Zerg either over make units or not make enough units, There's you're oftentimes in a good spot. Uh, th the probe hasn't been spotted yet. It will be laying down a pylon quite soon. Uh, I think Red should know what's up. He's getting his spine as third, and I think his next wave of larvae will be... Uh, He's got a spine started. He got speed and pulled out of gas. I think definitely Red has all the clues he needs for him to hold this. Yep. Pylon started. Gateways have finished adding. It's go time, it seems. Uh, more links being added. Not that many, though. He's getting a few overloads. Red is actually supply blocked. This is not good at all for him. Oh, he's that is actually he's quite getting terrible. Double he's getting double overlords, and once those finish, 
able to add on, be able to add on a whole bunch of links, but still, uh, Arstim seems to be already be getting in position here with these zealots. The four, first four zealots probably won't be able to do enough though. With well, the maybe gets surround. There. No, doesn't get a surround yeah. on the queen. With the spine being there, he has to wait for one or two more weapons, and at that point, the links that were supply blocked will yeah. then have finished. So it was very, uh, it was a bit of a mistake by Red, but it didn't end up cost him costing him anything. Man, I'm not quite sure how, how well this attack for uh, Arsene will go. Like, he's currently only on one gas, so transitioning into a tech pipe seems really difficult. And the Lynx are already out on the map here before, uh, before Lynx speed is finished. In fact, Red is already droning again. He's adding five more drones. He feels yeah, so sad. Yeah, but he has to. He's so far behind in the worker count because Red didn't warp in that aggressively. He just kind of passively warped in a few centuries and started working on his economy. Oh. He does need to be able well, to fix the round his here. Army, where is his down. Core? And where is the mothership core indeed? Like, he can't. He can't go back to his base from this angle. The mothership core is all the way at the, the warp gate tower. Uh, some zealots aren't even adding much to this fight, and you know, some of them are not even fighting. This is not looking good for Harsim at all. I think it was okay, though. Like, there were so many links there, and he's going to have zealots surviving once yeah. the mothership core arrives. I think that was a bit, that was a mistake by Harsim to leave his army alone, but Red didn't have the angle or the amount of units he needed to deal with that, and it actually ended up backfiring on yeah. him. And now he's forced to make more links, even though he's not that far ahead in drone count. No, the drone count is actually uh, only slightly more, slightly more ahead. I feel Harston really needs to, you know, kind of hurry up and get a fourth, a uh, third base. Like he's adding on four more gas, uh, three more gases, getting his forge. So he will be transitioning out of this while maintaining some sort of pressure. But it would have been a, a lot better if there was a mothership core with that fight. Yeah, for sure. Uh, just either a time warp or just having the DPS there or being able to recall if it did like shift in favor. It I, it just feels very risky to move your mothership core away from that army because it's all you have in the game. Losing that will cost it. I'm just so not sure of how this attack actually you know, worked out for Harston. It's such a, uh, a tough I call. Don't know what Almost gets a nice force field there. Like the pressure from Harstam is still there, and now Red is making roaches um, when he would rather be making drones. He does have a nice, li nice early lair, though. Yeah, he has a nice early lair. He's got plus one. Sorry, this looks like he's gonna roach Max. Like I, I just feel like he's gonna roach all in or try to roach all in uh, Harstam. It just seems like the thing he wants to do. He's still only on four gas, and he's making roaches already. I don't see anything added, but his lair is finished. So it doesn't. Need he does lose a queen, and it does look like he wants to pressure oh. the roaches. Harsim needs to back off, though. Yeah, he's almost too late in backing up. Forceville doesn't do much in this fight, though, but the Zealots are actually chopping up these Zerglings like, like breakfast, and this fight isn't going all that well for uh, for Red. So he drops his supply once again. Another warp in here from Harsim, who's currently heavily supply blocked, actually. Uh, doesn't really want to take this fight, but he uh, gets whoa, good, good oh. force field once again. Red is really getting baited here by Harstam. I'm not sure why he's doing this. I really disliked him keeping engaging with his links. Engaging with the roaches at that ramp where I said he needed to back off, I think was fine, but he didn't need to like keep engaging with his links. Mm. Regardless of that, Harstam just keeps getting the better end of the trades. I think Harstam is uh, oftentimes caught in a bit of a weird angle, but just his battle micro is a bit better than Red's. Yeah. Keep in mind that uh, it does seem like it's mostly roach production here on out from Red. Uh, he's currently supply. B uh, he was supply b for a small bit there. Will now be adding on more overlords. But the third for Harstam is now being uh, yeah already being mined from without any harassment whatsoever. It, it is looking to be up quite even. Uh, tech is being added for Harstam. He's getting plus one, adding a twilight so he can go into plus two. Uh, Robotech has got to be essential though because if R Rat just sticks the roaches, then you need immortals or colossi. Yeah, Harstam doesn't have blink yet, and he doesn't have an immortal yet. If Rhett didn't lose all those units, Ooh. I would really, really be afraid for Harsim right now. But he does seem to have enough army and force fields to hold for now. Well, force fields are going to be irrelevant when Tunneling Claws finishes. Yeah, if most. Tunneling Claws finishes and he doesn't have a sufficient immortal count, it will be very, very dangerous for him. And this is already starting to look dangerous. Red is already uh, fairly supply up. He's already moving across the map. There's really no relevant tech here for Harsim. He starts an observer before he starts an immortal, which I, I, guess, I, I guess in this case is quite good. Uh, force fields trapped nice, bunch of links. Good force fields here once again. Very favorable trades for ah, but there comes the burrow, so he can't do much. He needs that observer. Yeah, I think Harsim needs to buy a little bit of time. I don't know how many force fields he ha has exactly, but I think he can at least buy one or two more rounds of force fields of time for one or two immortals to come out. And at that point, I'm not sure if Red's army is going to be big enough. He does have so many roaches though, and he is like 50 supply ahead. Yeah, Red is really setting up for a multi-pronged attack. The Mothership Corps though sees that there's a lot of roaches there, all spread out. They're now also attacking. The third of Harstam, and Harstam is going to really have to pick a good position here to fight. He's got one immortal, but it's at his natural. He needs to rejoin it with the rest of his army yeah, in order to be it, it, Look at it, it like, it's like shaking. 
Okay. Here Drake's comes Red though. Force will go down. Fight. Oh. <laughs> Roaches are getting shredded behind the force fields, and a lot of units are stuck. The Immortal still hasn't joined the fight. It's not wiggling its way towards the fight, but it's a bit late to the party. Man, I think this was go. very good for Hearthstone, but he yeah. still needs to be but careful with his army positioning. Force force go fields go down. Oh, and here we go. Pop up, pop under, and here come the Roaches. So many Roaches, and the Immortal just now starts firing. He needed that ages ago. Hearthstone is going to lose so much stuff, and I don't know if he can recover. He has a second Immortal, though, now, and they're still both up. However, this third base is now under heavy attack. There's no blink, I feel, for, for Arsene, so he can't really do much with these stalkers. The Immortals now are actually being focused around right now. Decent force fields keep them, uh, the Roaches away, but still, this Immortal is also being focused down. And the sentries, the Zealots, they're all dying. So many reinforcements for Red, and I think he's going to even up the series 2-2 and bring it back. I didn't expect this, and damn, like, well done. <laughs> yeah, like, he's currently attacking third. The Photon Overcharge is really helping, though, but these stalkers, they're being warped in and taken down as they, uh, you know, as they come. Another Immortal is underway, but the reinforcements from Red, they just keep streaming, and GG! GG. Red evens it out! <laughs> that was a good timing by Red. Yeah, that was well played. I, um, I didn't expect it to work, actually. Like, I know Protoss just had sentries and a few stalkers, no blink, and Immortals were late. But whenever I rotel in, my stuff gets shredded regardless of what Protoss has. Oh. So I was kind of surprised there, but on the other hand, uh, like logically, having no immortals, uh, being forced to make an observer before your immortals because of Burrow, uh, wi no, not having Blink, it becomes very, very tough to, um, very tough to deal with that many roaches. And Red Jit did have uh, a very good gas timing, so he, he could flood the correct amount of roaches. Yeah, maybe if he transitioned out of his, uh, you know, his gateway style army earlier, he might have had a more adequate army to deal with. Yeah, uh, I think um, even though Harsim kept getting decent uh, ends of the trades, yeah. it also forced him to keep spending his gas and minerals on his frontal army and not teching behind it. Alright, well I hope you guys are as hyped for this game as I am. It's game number five between Harsim and Red coming right up. Here we are again. We are on Expedition Lost, game number five. I'm pretty hyped for this game, man. I really want to see who's going to come out on top. Three twos are the best kind of series, man. Exactly. All right. Here in the top right, we have the blue zero from Team Liquid. He is red. Losing the last two games in the bottom left corner. Can he win the ace match? It's Fnatic Harstam. I think a lot, player, a lot of players had Red, you know, peaked as not the winner in this match, including you. Yeah. But uh, he might just prove you wrong, man. Yeah, but I, I would argue that if um, Harsim played a standard game three, it would have been a 3-0. All right. I, like, I, I think Red played very well. Like, I'm not uh, discounting his efforts. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying uh, I dislike the strategic choices Harsim made for build orders. I would have preferred Harsim to just play out a standard game. He was two games up, he could just play chilled, relaxed, no pressure, and just kind of, you know, not force uh, or give your opponent oh. an opportunity to outplay you. Here's another thing we didn't expect, it's a forge first here from Harstam. And look what Red's doing. He's, He's drone, drone scouting. scouting. Wow. <laughs> they're both like, they're <laughs> this is this is relatively good for uh, Rhett, but yeah. in, in, in all fairness, oh, drone he's drone scouting into pool first. Yeah, well, you have to if you see a forge on this map. On this yeah. map, there's two pilot, uh, spots where you can pile on wall, which is very tough to deal. Like, I think um, on other maps, you can kind of stop cannon rushes with drone pools, but on this map, it's nearly impossible. Oh, he cancels the forge. Oh, I like that. Why? Because uh, he scouted that it was a pool first. Yeah. And he knows it's on an early pool. So the forge has uh, little value for him. Getting an earlier nexus is uh, 
a better, has more value. Yeah, but a bit of a noob question. Oh, I, I like this. He's actually taking the third because his natural was being blocked. I'm not quite sure. Uh, Harsten will see this though. The pull's about to finish. I want to see if he makes a couple links here. Uh, he'll make two or four, for uh, sure. Like you have to to catch the pi uh, the link, the uh, or the pro blocking possibly your natural or making pylons at your third. So yeah, you're you're forced to, you're forced to make two or four links, and right. it depends on how greedy you want to be. And he's going back to droning. He still hasn't taken his third hatch though, and Harston yeah. will probably be throwing down. And making uh. just two two links is a bit greedy because Harston could pylon block it, and the two links don't kill it fast enough. So yeah. the pylon regenerates more health, and it could delay your natural hatchery for a, a long time. Yeah, but I Harston feel Harston is kind of getting the upper hand out of this whole exchange, but yeah. it's pretty close. Like yeah. we still have three hatches for red. Harston like still sort of red nexus first. I feel like. Uh, drone scouting a forge first and then going full first yourself ends up pretty even. But seeing Harstam cancelled the forge and went for a very quick ne quick nexus, I do feel like it, it's an edge for Harstam. What's even more important is that Harstam went for double gas and he's mining uh, out of it pretty uh, heavily uh, already. Um, something yeah, in the back of my mind says Stargate. In, oh, there's actually two links going in because this wall isn't tight yet. There's no uh, cell. Oh so there's well one, one probe is going to fall. Down. The other one needs to run for it. This is actually huge. It might. This might. Oh no! You don't go out. Don't say it. What? No. Oh, uh, you can probe no. lock this in. Doesn't right. actually. Oh. Oh, don't go back in. Run. No. No. Oh. Go oh, in. Go. Go. Run. Uh, no. Oh, now he's getting a. Now he's getting a stalker. So no, what's going around? There's no, no in the gap. Yes. Oh, I c <laughs> mistakes were made. But uh, this is actually quite used. At this point, it's pretty meaningless, though. Yeah. Like, is there a pylon? No, there's o the only pylons for Harstam are uh, at his ramp. So if he wants to place tech, he's going to have to do it over there. Um, Harstam's getting up still quite a bit of gas. Oh, wow. And this probe, it will survive. I actually made a bigger deal out of that than it was. I thought no, that's Harstam okay. Harstam no, I thought Harstam was forge expanding, and when you forge expand, your ranged attack units like Stalker and Mothership Core uh -huh. are so late that the two links almost force you into an all into a very standard build or an all in, yeah. just because you cannot put down tech while the links are in your base. But seeing he w he canceled the forge, got a nexus, but then didn't retake the forge, but take a, a gate and a cyber. It didn't matter that much because the stalker would be out in time to hmm. s uh, shoot away the links for tech to be out. All right. So the tech choice from Harstam um, is well a forge, uh, which isn't really tech. I mean, it's still gateway tech. He's doing a bit of pressure at the front with a stalker and a zealot. Uh, there's no link speed on their way actually for uh, for Red. He's currently floating 200 gas. Uh, the not forge getting a link for Harstam means the third base. There's no yeah, the two base all in. Obviously. There's no two base all in where you. Nexus first, gate, and then cyber, and then start getting upgrades. It's very inefficient. If you want to get upgrades with your all-in, you just open forge expand. Cause you oh. I see a killer efficient. mothership core making its way towards the third. Going to go for this queen, which is uh, it's yeah. pretty dead. He's already started a new queen. And uh, this is going to be really annoying, because he's going to be going and trying to kill as many drones as he can here. Delaying quite a bit of mining. Uh, I hope he, I would like him to fly back and not recall back. Like, not stay too long. Because the energy on the mothership core can actually be quite helpful. Having to... Having two overcharges oh. is huge. I don't think it will die. No, but it's quite close. But it's quite close. The Mothership Core got away with 30 HP. I feel this is really the point where uh, Harsim should try to move out and take a third. Like yep. He does have the for Forge. He has a Stalker. He has a few sentries. He's going to wait for one more sentry warp in. Or usually you expand with four, five, six sentries. So uh, here it comes. So Red went up to 55 drones, which is a, a very healthy number for the nine minute mark. Um, but on top of that, he just decided to do all his tech at once. Like, he got a lair, a road warrant, and, a and circling speed, and double evo at the same time. That's, that's quite, the, quite the tech choice. But uh, Harstam scouts all of this with an hallucinated Phoenix. Yeah, and I really dislike double evo builds against Harstam's builds, because there's a lot of pressure Harstam can put on, mm -hmm. and I feel like double evo doesn't reward enough against it. I, I used to play a lot against um, some Furtuses uh, in practice, I won't name names, that did this build, and they were very good at it, and I had a lot of trouble um, ever surviving with anything that wasn't just pure units with maybe a single upgrade. Mm, it's a pre pretty interesting build out of here for Harstam. He's finally adding on more gates, as well as getting the Twilight Council and going into Blink. Like, this seem you, you could almost say this is like three base Blink stock, but that doesn't really... It that doesn't really work, does it? Yeah, it does. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, three base blink stalker, just massive amounts of stalkers, is so powerful. All right. It's what Lilba does every game, and I lose it almost every game. Ah. 
Well, there's actually a uh, Spire on the way for Red, who is on six gases, so uh, he might actually go for some sort of a muta transition. Yeah, and I dislike the way he's playing. It's so greedy. If uh, Harston realizes and warps Mad Stalker and attacks as the mutas are popping out, he has almost a guaranteed win against his build order. Yeah. He uh, can also wait and cannon up a base, make Master Mad Stalkers and go for the base trade, but I think just hitting when mutas pop is always the best idea. Now, he's get now Harston is actually getting uh, a robo facility, which... Robo yeah. is still okay. It's, it's still like okay. It can be a robo just for an observer in case there's burrow. Like he, he's almost a bit forced to have it, but he needs to scout the spire because it, it makes a huge difference. If yeah. Harson just assumed it's a standard build, it could be very good for Red. Well, lots of probes here actually uh, fall. Actually, two only. Um, Red needs to pull out in time so he doesn't get force fielded in. Uh, Harston should know something's up. He sees the spire with the hallucinated phoenix. That's so big. Yeah, he needs to notice the spire as well. I'm not sure if it's you know something he actually saw. Uh, we will see when he starts either making he stalkers. Starts, he starts. He starts uh, stargates. Two of them, I think. Yeah, double stargate being uh, added on for Harston. The question is though, is it on time? 30 mutilists currently in production. Yeah, you will I'm need to catch up with blink stalkers. I'm in not the, the biggest fan of going uh, stargates when you open blink uh, against mutas because it takes a while for the phoenix numbers to be dangerous. Oh. And at that point, either Zerg has so many mutas that it's Oh, scary, look at the back's rocks though. Harston's army is moving in to try intercept, but oh, the link. The Ling gave it away. What yeah. a badass. Sp Rip in peace, uh, Ling hero. <laughs> <laughs> he, he All right, so the Mutilus have been spotted by the hallucinated Phoenixes, and they are making their way towards the third base, oh, but Harsim is seeing this coming. Roaches. What are those roaches doing there? That's like... I don't know like why why sometimes people feel uh, obligated to start oh, switching. He might snap the mothership oh, yeah, core, that's quite big. Before it triggered overcharge as well. That was Doesn't huge. lose anything in trade for it. Uh, Red is currently really harassing on two fronts, and the mutilus really allow him to do this. Uh, Harston though anticipates this and moves uh, back towards his natural, but there's not a lot of anti air there, and now these mutilus are going to go into the main. I kind of feel like this is not that great for Red. He just doesn't have that much gas no. in his mutilus, and at the point. And he's already transitioning out of it. And Harsom's ground army is still powerful. And he's not chrono boosting out Phoenix. He's making roaches again. Yeah, he's and, getting ha care -based and upgrades. Harsom seems to kind of have an idea what's going on because he's not producing that many Phoenixes. Yeah. He should notice that the muta count is not increasing at this stage in the game. He's making double Phoenixes because, well, they're just really, really good against mutas. Uh, mutas currently flying into the main. I'm not sure if that's the correct decision. He's still making phoenixes though, he has to realize something's up. He sees oh. a lot of roaches and he didn't see the media kind of increase. Arsene's economy is in such a good position that he can just warp in uh, against these attacks. Nice force fields here, force splitting in a bunch of roaches, but his control is gonna have to be really good. He's losing stalkers, but now the phoenixes move in and take out all of the mutalisks. He needs to move a bit farther back and fight the roaches there. A lot of roaches are stuck behind the force fields. The third base is getting assaulted, but cells were warped in. He's trying to force himself up the ramp, but that almost never works for Zerg. No, I'm not sure where Red's, Red's plan is here. Like, he's finally starting to attack the third, but at that point, Harston will just move down the ramp and try to fight. This, har this roach ball here down the ramp is really not big enough. I would really like to see one or two void rays. It just changes the battle so much. Uh, Harston still fighting his third with the cannons and a bunch of stalkers, but he's now cleaning up all the roaches down the ramp with the phoenixes, and he will now try to unsettle his third base, and this is looks this just puts Hearthstone in such a great position. Red just Re lost so much bulk. He's of making his army. links. He's making links, and he doesn't have a good transition. He started two two upgrades, but really, what is he gonna do? He's gonna try to make a switch into altars, but I'm not sure if it's gonna be ever enough. Right. So now we have a lot of zerglings, and he's going into hive. Uh, he's getting the relevant upgrades, and he's getting pathogen glands. I I am completely lost as to what Red's game plan is at this point. He like wants to go into ultras, and I don't like think that's necessarily a bad decision. Oh, well like here come the zerglings on top of the stars. He needs a force field. Good force field here, though, forcing Red to back off. If Harsim realizes in time, he can counterattack. But if he doesn't realize in time, he might be. In well, he's making immortals, actually. Yeah, and. If it oh, does one end up, left. <laughs> he could play it a long game too. Like if he makes enough immortals and archons. Okay, so he's making nine infestors at this point. So I'm not sure if he can still afford ultralisk. Uh, Red is on four bases, but the fourth is far from heavily saturated. Um, because of the link flood, he had a lot of gas banks. So even after the upgrades and the infestors, he still has a thousand gas. I'm pretty sure he can afford anything he wants once high finishes. I w I really wonder if Harston realizes that he's currently in a position where he can go out on the map and be scary. However, he doesn't really have the AOE uh, composition in he order to do AOE that. He doesn't have AOE, and Red does have nine infestors. I might be very wrong about this, and this might be very good for Red. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna try and cut off these circlings, but uh, yeah, he's having none of it. 
I guess Red is teaching us that even though he like made some bad trades, he's just a macro monster. Oh, are these infestors gonna get picked off? No, he sees the infestors, but he backs off in time before some of them oh, get bungled. Oh, that's scary with the infestors. If you split your uh, phoenixes and just lift them all and then move in with your army, it's very, very terrifying. He does have Roach Link to support it though, so I guess that's not an issue. Man, this is gonna be so much about positioning. Arstam needs to like have the perfect spread on his army so that they really can like fight the roaches yeah, but not get it fungal. Grab the infestor, go, grab it. Oh, why are they not fun? He's lifting up most of the infestor, but the fungal growths are really good. Uh, this fight, however, for red so far with all of the links and roaches is not good. The immortals are taking out so many of the roaches. Some fungals going down. Farstam is now though blinking in a lot of synergies and red's army is falling. Red He's supplies plundering and Harsim is just warping in more and more units. He does have one or two fungals left, but his ground army is just not that big. Red has to back off, and what is his transition here? What is his transition? Ultralisks. He's getting the Adrenal Glance upgrade. He just finished his Ultra, ca ultra Cavern, and he's adding on five Ultralisks. Looking at Harsim's army, he does have two Immortals, though, and those are going to be crucial in the upcoming fight. Maybe it's because I have trouble playing these types of games against Protoss, but I just didn't expect this to go f so well for Red. Red just kept trading, and now suddenly he's uh, got good upgrades, he's making Ultras. I think he saved all of his Infestors, and even though Harsim has a lot of supply, thinking about it, his supply is like cheap supply. There's no Templar, there's very little Colossus, no Archons. Uh, a few immortals, but really not enough. And Red has so many infestors, and he's gonna have ultras. I, d I just don't know how Harstam is gonna stop this army. Harstam heavily delayed his tech mostly to go for a more, you know, heavily along the line, uh, a very central line composition. I dislike this move out from him though. His army is simply not capable of fighting all these infestors, all these roaches, and all these ultralisks. I think he's making a big mistake. I guess this is the greatest advantage of going to. Stargates after going blink, you just don't have force if the uh, Zerg transitions out oh. of the attack. Uh, uh, needs to retreat it out of here right now. There might be Fungals already landing, but uh, he only catches a single Stalker. Uh, very scary moment here for Harstam. He's getting more, more Immortals and he's adding on more Zealots as well, but uh, this was quite close. But however, his fourth wave is, is now heavily exposed and Red so seems to be making a move. Investors. Yeah, like what year is it? <laughs> Ultra's uh. dropping away at the cannons. He's gonna make an assault at his fourth base, but I don't think this is an angle he wants to take a fight in. He needs to be very careful. Oh, he he's has gonna a good kill army, the Nexus. But it's not invulnerable. The, fu the fungals do a hit, but the, the angle of the infestors. Actually, oh. the, the infested Terrans are blocking all the ultras from doing anything, but they're still doing so much damage, and Harstam's army is taking a lot of damage in this fight. Red's army is so strong that it doesn't. May, maybe it doesn't even matter, but his battle micro has not been on point, and Harstam is counterattacking and killing drones. Is so there a chance that Harstam still holds? There's a counterattack actually at the third. Uh, 11 drones have fought there uh, because of the Zealot Harass. But losing the fourth for Harstam is, is a huge deal because he's simply starting to fall down in the economy. Yeah, he's his lost 28 drones. He is, his main base is mined out, so the fact that he doesn't have that many probes yet left is uh, not a big deal. Actually, he has 60, I think. So it's, o it's okay for him. But um, he needs a fourth. He's, he's, li he's not got mineral patches in his main anymore, and, and Red does have economy. Yeah, it's and uh, if, if Red does decide to make uh, a switch again, he needs gas and money and, and income to like keep up with the tech switches. You can't stay on three base forever. Wow, Harstam is adding on. Uh, crap, what do you call those units? <laughs> Tempest. <laughs> Tempest, of course. But in response, I know I'm supposed to know that. <laughs> but still, uh, there's actually f seven corruptors in production, so I'm I'm not quite sure how. Red was actually but he aware made of a that. great aspire. Is that seven corruptors for Brewlords? In that case, the Tempests are going to do a great job. Oh, you're right. Wow, actually, Burrow also being added on. Really, it's going to be about... I, I feel there's just going to be one big fight coming up, but that fight might actually come sooner than Harston really wants there to be. Uh, Red is once again moving towards the southern corner of the base, uh, where Harstam is desperately trying to rebuild his army. He's got you know, a handful of Archons, he's got some sentries. He's now making Tempests, but I don't feel he's ready really to fight this fight head on. No, I don't think he's ready to fight this head on. I, I think Red needs to engage well in order to make this work, but oh, his army is definitely feedback. very scary. He does have Templar though with lots of feedbacks available. Oh. oh, these sentries don't get caught out, but doesn't do a whole lot. Tempest now in a good position above the cliff, and this isn't really anything that Red can fight into. Red's economy is so big though. Oh, at this point lords. he can start making spines, or not my spines, he doesn't have that much uh, money. But at this point he can just start banking a lot of money, uh, money and start working on a transition. Harsim's income is not big enough to keep up with a big tech switch at this point. You were completely right about the brute lords. There's currently nine brute lords out on the field, which is incredibly scary, but the Tempests are of course a hard counter against them. More corruptors being added on so he can actually fight the Tempests. I'm still very worried for Harsim at this point. Yeah, I would like Red to switch out some of his queens and links for more corruptors. 
in this situation, a big corruptor, like a big corruptor fleet with a few broodlords and a few uh, ultras, infestors, vipers for support, can really deal well with this army. But because he's so, he's got so much supply oh, in these other broodlords. units, it's hard for him to get enough corruptors out. Wow, they instantly <laughs> smashed the stalkers here. Just showing how strong this army is. Uh, Harstam is also quite close to maxed out. Uh, Red is actually up to 204 supply, so he used uh, like a bit of a trick there. But I'm not sure really if, if Harstam can actually fight this fight. Uh, more Corruptors also being add on still. He's getting an Oracle for range vision, but still Harstam this fight. Harstam can't have his, uh, his Tempest that far forward. Oh, the fight commences. He needs some feedback with the, with the High Templar, but he's just storming. Uh, lots of Infested Terrans still going down, and this is so much firepower here no from the Zerg. Harstam needs to disengage. There's so much Infested Terrans and reinforcements coming across the map in red. Uh, Harstam's ar army is slowly dwindling, and is this going to be the end for the Protoss player? I'm not sure. Like, all of the Brood Arts are also falling, and only two of them left. There's still quite a lot of Immortals left, which are, of course, still... Uh, he can get one more shot off on... No, he doesn't, and he loses the final Tempest. 14 Corruptors currently in production from red. However, his top left base is also being attacked by Zealots that are currently killing all of the drones, but he seems to have held there as well. There's not that many Broodlords left. Harson did make a Stalker Warp, and he might be able uh, to the push back barely. The supply is not that far off yet. Only one Broodlord left. He needs to focus it down. Immortal shredding through the ground army, and Stalker's picking up the Broodlords. Did Red overstep? Did Red overstep? He's losing so many Infestors. So many Lings, though, in production. More Immortals falling as well. These Immortals have such a great amount of firepower. The Warp in at the top left is still continuing. And he's killing the fourth base. Supplies have evened up after that much battering. Harston managed to survive, and his fourth base is up and running. Yes, he's running probes towards the angle. If he can get gases there running and his, his saturation going, I give him a good shot. Because Red is stuck in a bad composition. He does have Broodlords, but he's got so little support. The Immortals just shredded all the support, uh, and now he's only got air army left. Taken out. What I don't understand is that all this time, Harstam has had a Dark Shrine. Wait, no, he cancelled the Dark Shrine. That's why I didn't see any DTs. I like that decision, though. Like, his army was so, like, weak. He needed every little bit of money. He could How use. much army does Red actually have? He has 37 links and 13 Corruptors. This base is dead. Red is just slowly crumbling. Because he's had such a big economy for such a long time, all three of his bases are pretty much mined out, and he's only got one running base. And honestly, in an equal base scenario where, scenario where Harstam has one running base and Red has one running base, I give the Protoss a huge edge. Does Harstam, though, have the forces he needs in order to combat this investor, this corrupted Broodlord count? There's so many Broodlords there now, though, and he's only just started remaking Tempest. It is a scary army, but Harstam can run around it. That army is so slow, and if you can, don't have investors, you cannot ever catch the Protoss army. I think adding The moment on Red yeah. lose, uh, moves out, he's going to lose so much of his own stuff. It's so important at this point for Harstam to make a Dark Shrine, I feel. He's also not mining a lot of gas, which is something you really need, but if he can actually establish his fifth base, he will be in such a great position. Uh, is it I really feel that Harstam though needs to be more over the place, needs to be poking more, needs to be doing more damage because letting Red get such a huge Broodlord ball is just so scary. Harstam doesn't know how many units exactly Red well, has. You got, got a good scout off with the Oracle. Yeah, sure, but you don't know if uh, investors are popping or, or what's in the eggs. Yeah, okay. Like it's very, very risky to move out on the map when you're in a scenario where you don't have a good grasp of economy. Because the game has gone on for so long, neither player really knows the bank or like the amount of money the other player has. Mm, he kills the sixth base that was underway for Red, but the Zerglings are now heading down to intercept, and there's not really a whole lot of uh, reinforcements here for Harstam to, to rescue these Immortals. Immortals are actually fo no, they're not focusing down the base anymore. Uh, the sixth base for Harstam has actually also fallen to this Broodlord army, which is incredibly scary. Harsim is moving in position to intercept, but he only has three Tempests. I Can he actually like deal with Arsim all the Corruptors? I don't like fight, though. I wish he would just at least like go uh, top left and shut that down. Yeah, he's, he, he can't really fight this. Like, he's long-range mining with his, uh, with his probes, and the fight is now commencing. Corruptors are going to kill these Tempests, and they're falling down rapidly, and there's really Stalkers no answer. Stalkers fighting Broodlings, and there's Queens under the Broodlings. He's blinking, but here comes he the Zerg. but he doesn't have enough Stalkers. He needs to back off. Is Red going to overwhelm once again? It looks like the Broodlords are just too much to handle along with the Zergling. Harsim gets yeah, around yeah, yeah. and then Riot. <laughs> wow. What a great series between these two Man, players. Man, that was a great final game. I'm Such a game we, five. I'm happy, we got, I'm, I'm happy Harsim lost the other two games, so we got to see that game. Yeah. Man, he pulled out everything he had. Sadly for Harsim, he's going to be falling down to the bottom three. Uh, bottom four, he's going to play in the third place match. Yeah. Uh, I do think we're going to have uh, Red over here briefly. 
just to uh, you know ask him a couple of questions. Let's see what uh, was his, his thoughts were on this series because this was not only close but it was very very exciting. Yeah, I agree. People congratulations. Uh, ah, you already have the mic. Nice. How do you feel, man? Uh, I'm still a little bit shaky from <laughs> all the action, to be honest. Man. How did you feel when you were down 0-2 at the start and then managed to come back 2-2 after Harston pulling his feared Immortal Sentry build and then managing to close out the series? Yeah, I, I uh, really wanted to win the first map because I, I knew the first three maps were could be very hard for me in that yeah. matchup. And I felt pretty good on Overgrowth and Expedition Lost. So I was pretty happy when uh, I actually managed to win the Vani game because I knew I would have a better chance in map four and map five. So yeah, and you would have been out of the series otherwise. Yeah, it would have been a quick 3-0. <laughs> <three zero. laughs> All right, I have some uh, deep strategical questions on Vani. Did you how when did you know it was an immortal in? Uh, I actually didn't know yeah, it was. I thought you were going to kill, try to kill his third. Yeah, I, I mean he was either he was auditing me the first two games or doing hard pressure builds. So I just decided, okay, this build is uh, really good against fast third base, and it's really good against any kind of all in. So it's a pretty yeah, high percentage that it's yeah, one or the yeah. other. Okay. So like only only Stargate would have been uh, a problem. And in the last game. Uh, he went blink into third base, and then he added to Stargates. I almost always feel like if uh, the three base blink player just makes a massive amount of stalkers and hits you just at the the right moment, it's very difficult to stop when you're transitioning into Muta. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, it is very hard, but um, on Expedition Lost, there are so many attack paths that's easy to that it's attack. kind of kind of good for that strat, but. It's not really solid. Um, yeah. It's just Do you think because he transitioned into Phoenix, you you could transition out of your style? Uh, yeah, I, I was banking on him going uh, full full Stargate Phoenix. Yeah. So that's why I got the Infestation Pit. But um, it was still a pretty hard spot for me. Yeah. I think it's r it was really hard to attack a anywhere. Always ramps and, and small areas and stuff. Yeah, I feel like because he made so many Phoenixes and he was then forced to keep making units because you made roaches, he could never transition into like the the AOE tech units and then it forced kind of a scrappy game from him. Yeah. So it was very nice. All right. Well, thanks you guys for uh, for this awesome interview. I think pretty soon we're going to go into the third place match, which will be between Harstam and Optimus. Stick with us. It's going to be like pretty soon after this game. So just a very short break, and when we're back, it's going to be the third place game. <laughs> <laughs>